All right, be honest. When you see that this is a wired headset, but with 12 hours of battery life, do you really know what they're talking about? I'm not gonna lie, I didn't at first, but it turns out they're using that battery power to enhance the overall audio quality that's coming out of this headset. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how well that actually works, whether or not it's gonna be worth it for you, and then we're gonna run it through the full review gauntlet, you know, check out the build quality, test out the mic, and all that sort of stuff. In the box, we get the headset, a little quick start guide, and a small USB-A to USB-C cable for charging up the battery. The wire is not removable, so don't go reefing on there thinking you're gonna be able to take it off because it's not supposed to come off and you're just gonna break it. It's just a plain old rubber wire with a 3.5 millimeter connector on the end. Nothing special, nothing fancy in any way, very plain and basic. But because it uses a standard 3.5 millimeter connector, it makes it super compatible. This thing's gonna work with like everything, whether you're using Xbox, PlayStation, or even on the PC, although on the PC you will need a splitter cable because that platform uses separate jacks for the speakers and the microphone. But still, the whole idea here is this thing is massively compatible with pretty much every device out there that takes this 3.5 millimeter connector. We got an all plastic build here all the way around. The only part where I could find any metal is on the interior part of this headband extension arch. And it's got this carbon fiber design. I actually think it looks pretty cool. It looks kind of badass on there. And there's no RGB lighting on here, which I think is perfectly fine because it's a headset and you can't see it anyway. The whole thing weighs around 250 grams and it feels pretty durable. I can really bend it and stretch it out without feeling like it's gonna completely snap in half on me. Ear cup connections feel nice and solid as well. No play, no movement or anything like that. So overall, we got a plastic build here, but it's done right. For adjustments, we got the usual extension in and out and the ear cups give us tilting movement and swivel. So there really shouldn't be any issues with these fitting all sorts of different head shapes and sizes. Cushions on here are really nice. We've got nice breathable fabric all the way around, even on the inside, and then nice plush, super soft memory foam. And they're also fully removable, which can really help with cleaning, and it also gives you the option to be able to replace them if they ever wear out on you, assuming you can find replacement parts. We got all this stuff on here working together to make a really comfortable overall fit with this headset. You've got headband extensions, tilt and swivel in the ear cups, and the clamping force is actually medium to low, so it's pretty comfortable to wear for a long period of time. And I'm not somebody that wears glasses, but I'd be willing to bet that these are gonna be comfortable if you do. Now as far as controls, everything's on the back of the left ear cup. We got volume control up and down, chat mixer up and down, power switch, and there's two modes on there by the way, PlayStation and Xbox, and then we got our USB-C port for charging the battery. The microphone's permanently attached, so just like the cable that we talked about in the beginning, don't go trying to pull it off of there. It's a flip to mute mic, so instead of using a button or a switch somewhere on the ear cups, you just flip the mic upwards to mute it and push it down when you want to unmute it. And they went with a really short boom design for this, so it really keeps it out of the way and out of your field of view. You can't see this thing at all when it's deployed and you're using it, and that's a big deal for me. I can't stand when I can see a headset mic sticking into the field of view or into my peripheral vision out of the corner of my eye. It just drives me crazy and I find it annoying. And this completely eliminates that issue, and it also keeps it out of the way if you're like sipping coffee or scarfing down slices of pizza. Now in terms of tech specs, these are being driven by 40 millimeter drivers with a frequency response of 20 to 20,000, which is pretty typical. There's really nothing special about these, pretty common specs right there actually. And this is where the battery power comes in. First of all, let's just talk about the battery life really quickly. You get 12 hours of battery life on a full charge on this thing. So let's just get that out of the way right now. And there's also an LED indicator on the power switch that'll show you when it's on and when you're draining power from it. Now what's really happening here is they're using that internal battery power to drive some amplification and also some bass boost. And oh my God, does it ever make a huge difference. You put these things on with the power off, no big deal, kind of mediocre sound quality actually. Then you flip that switch into the PlayStation mode and boom, everything changes, including the volume. And I actually scared the crap out of myself when I first turned the power on, so watch out for that. There's plenty of sound latitude here to bring out the subtle details in the game. You know, footsteps, reloads, doors opening and closing, all that sort of stuff. Those really subtle and important audio cues, they're all there with this headset. I also talked about the bass being boosted by the power, and I just want to mention that these are really bassy. Now that's not uncommon with gaming headsets, but with these it's pretty intense. But I find that it makes the gameplay with gunfire and explosions sound epic you're getting some seriously punchy audio with these new Recon 200 Gen 2s. 
Something I noticed is that there's a pretty big difference in the loudness between the PlayStation and the Xbox modes. The PlayStation mode is significantly louder and I ended up just keeping it in that mode the entire time while I was using it because it just sounded better to me. I'm not sure why there's such a big difference or if there's supposed to be, but it's definitely there and it's definitely noticeable. So you'll be able to choose between these based on whatever sounds best to you. Now let's talk about the microphone on here. Right now you're listening to the audio being recorded unedited straight from the headset onto the computer behind me. I'm going to put it into the video without making any changes, enhancements, nothing. So what you hear is what you can expect to get with this. Now that short boom that we talked about before, it's good because it's keeping it out of the way of my mouth so there shouldn't be any breathing sounds or anything like that being picked up into the audio recording. But at the same time, keeping it over to the side means it's an off axis pickup pattern and that can sometimes have a negative effect on recorded audio. So, I mean, there's that, but at the same time, I think it's actually doing a pretty good job for what it is. It's a gaming headset, not a studio quality microphone, and for a gaming headset, I actually think it sounds pretty good. There's no way your teammates are gonna have any trouble hearing you. There's no way the enemies, or maybe your teammates, are gonna have any trouble hearing your smack talk. Nothing like that, and that's what really matters. And also, I think it's good enough if you wanna take things a step further and do a little bit of content creation, whether you're making YouTube videos or streaming or something like that. I think this has got you covered. The bottom line here is, I think Turtle Beach has a winner on their hands with these Recon 200 Gen 2s. They're delivering exactly what gamers want. It's a solid, well-built headset with the sound and microphone quality that you really want when you're gaming. It's got those power features that bring out all the fine details in the sound and really delivers an immersive, punchy audio experience. It's really quite impressive for a headset in this class. Just make sure you remember to keep them charged because all this good stuff that we're talking about with the audio quality, it's really coming from those powered features that you get by relying on the battery. So as soon as you run out of juice, all that stuff goes away and these can go pretty quickly from being awesome to just okay. At a price of $60, you're getting a pretty awesome sound experience from the Recon 200 Gen 2s and they're pretty easy to recommend. Purchasing links, full specs, details, all that sort of stuff, it's gonna be down in the description. Check it out if you're interested. And if you're not subscribed yet, you should definitely consider getting subscribed so you get notified of all the upcoming content that's on its way. See ya.